Okay, number two, we have what Jennifer are Harper. <clears throat> Jennifer Harper. <laughs> Pay attention. <laughs> and Catherine O'Brien. And they wrote a book called Student Driven Learning that has this great title about small, medium, and big steps to engage and empower students. Their newest publication is Classroom Routines for Real Learning. And they are two people who work together. Isn't it great to have colleagues that you can um, work together with, chat together with? And they both have sons. How many sons do you have, Jennifer? Combined? Yeah, no, combined. Yes. Three for you. I have one. So it's all boys in their family as well. But there's a great thing um, when I heard Jennifer speak, uh, we're going to dip into classroom routines because they make it sound so easy. So welcome and we're going to celebrate your book. Great. Perfect. So uh, as you were just saying, my name is Jennifer Harper and it's Catherine O'Brien and yeah, we're going to talk to you a little bit about the classroom routines. Sort of a good time of year for classroom routines, isn't it? We sort of got some established, and maybe a little bit bored with some of them, and ready to tweak some. So we're going to start with a little bit of a premise on why why this book came about and what and why it happened. No problem. And then we have exactly ten slides, and we know we have twenty minutes, and we know that we stand between you and break. So <laughs> we're very we're very earnest about that. So we've actually on our screen we've a timer. We've got a timer. So we know we can only take for two minutes to each slide. And each slide has, has under a theme with different routines. Um, and this is the way our book is broken up. So we'll try to share They're micing routines. you. Oh, they are. Sorry, we were arguing Sorry. about who had to have the mic because I said I felt like Lady Gaga with a mic on. I'm like, I've got a good teacher voice, but we're being, they're you. Yeah, now and you're I was laughing too. earlier because I didn't have the because mic. Because she wasn't wearing a mic. Okay. Um, so, so yeah, we've got our timer. We're going to go and we're going to try to, if we are short on any of the routines or we don't feel like we can fit them in, just come up to us and chat with us. Happy to share them and I'm um, happy to share the slideshow with you too if you want, for sure. All right. So we really took a look at redefining routines. We all have routines. It might be your route to school. It might be how you organize your photocopies. It might be the color pen you like to mark in. I might reveal a bit too many things about my own little idiosyncrasies as a teacher, but we all do have our routines. And routines definitely have a value. But we have a bit of a conundrum as educators because we want to empower and engage our students, and yet routines tend to typically be the most teacher-directed part in our classroom. So in our first book, Jen and I wrote about student-driven learning and how we could create a framework in a classroom for putting the students in the driver's seat. And then in this book, we decided to take a look at those classroom routines and see how we could put the students in the driver's seat when creating those routines. And Kathy Lundy was just talking about that idea of mucking it about with our students. And that's sort of what we found when we were looking at routines and moving them from being teacher directed to more student centric, that we had to take a risk. That the classroom might not look the same way every year, every month, even every day. That we had to change up our routines. That we had to look at the classroom. We had to listen to the students and we had to see what they valued. I'm a middle-aged woman. I don't always know what they're going to value, so I have to rethink, retweak, hear what the buzzwords are, see what they value different years to know what routines are going to excite them. Um, and so we came up with quite a list when we were writing this. We took a look at, look at our professional obligations, what we wanted for our students, our aspirations as educators, and we came together to create these ideas for routines. So the first one we threw up there was the job board. And I know that at the start of the year, Scholastic and many different companies offer nicely laminated cards for teacher jobs in, within the classroom. And I know I definitely love having people who hand out paper in my class. Come on, we all do. And so it's nice to have those kind of jobs. But what we've been doing for the past few years is we've been flipping that. The students come in the classroom, we talk about what kind of classroom we want, and then we say to them, OK, what roles do you need to play in the classroom to have this kind of community you're talking about. And they come up with our classroom roles or our jobs. And this is great because now they value them. So we're not telling them what to do, we're asking them and they're coming up with the ideas. So one example, which hopefully is working out today that I'm here, is the prime ministers in my class are talking to the supply teacher and walking them through all of the different routines we've set up. And the dino fish crew, which you'll hear about later, they're probably trying to wheedle with the supply teacher to tell them that they've earned lots of dinos for their behavior, which hopefully they have. So these are some of the ways that you're going to see the different routines we've talked about 
are ones where we've tried to either create them with the student or we've modified them to make the students take ownership of the routine. So starting off, we, the, we're just going to take every other slide, and I'm looking at my two minutes here, and, um, and we're just going to go through different ones. This is actually one of the reasons the book started, was because I was presenting this, and Brenda might remember some of these kids, um, is I was presenting this routine at, at here uh, two years ago, Mary? Was it no, two years ago? Many. Many years ago? Oh, <laughs> many years ago. <laughs> and, and this is what spurred on this book. So this is just one routine. It's just a morning routine. And I, my little guys have their jobs. And one of the jobs is weatherman. And one of the jobs is chair sitter. Because you, ne you, never, you, can, ne you can never have too many of those. And, um, and graphing the weather is another little job of mine. So what happens in the morning is as my guys walk in in the morning, I get to greet them and stand by the door and say hello to them and have those really neat moments. And they know that their job is to come in and they get their time to settle in, put their books and everything else, put things away. I'll show you a new a, a routine a little further on. It talks about timers so that they know when they call to be. Um, and then when they come together in a circle, I'm not in this picture. I'm actually taking the picture <laughs> because I'm not part of this. So it's awesome. And I've got my, my little guy who's weather and he's sitting there and he's asking the kids what they predict the weather will be because in grade one the weather is a big deal for us because every day you get Miss Harper do I have to wear a coat and you're sort of pulling your hair out every day going I really don't want to tell you if you have to wear a coat every day at some point you need to be able to figure this out and so we graph the weather every day we talk about what we predict it will be and then because we have the interactive whiteboard we click right on the weather network it's presented in front of us we see the highs we see the lows we talk about where we are in Canada we get to have all of that information and then after about mid-September, and September is really great because the temperatures really fluctuate a little bit in September, we talk about when it's, when, what is a good temperature for us to be outside with out of coat. And the kids usually pick somewhere between 16 to 18 degrees. That's sort of, and that's where my teacher voice goes in at 12 degrees and says, I don't think so actually. <laughs> but, um, but somewhere they end up with 12, and, and then you can see here, we graph it every day, and they end up drawing a little line across it. That's another person's job draw a little line across it, and that's the no coat line. So now we don't have to ask if we have to wear a coat at recess anymore. They can just look at the weather routine and go, oh, coat today, it's 14. And it's just, it's a routine. I'm, I'm not in the picture, I'm not part of it, I'm not running it, they're running it entirely, and I'm not telling them if they have to wear a coat every day. They're managing their own attire. So it's just one little routine, and it's morning. And there we go, there's the next set. All right, so we're, this, this chapter in our book is talking about how you can take routines beyond sort of the settling in beginning of the day routines and to build your class community. So the one there that's called the put up wall, um, my teaching partner was getting very tired of kids coming in from recess and constantly tattletaling on each other. And that seemed to be the focus for them. And that's how they were getting attention was this tattletaling. And so he just lost it one day. And sometimes routines do come from those moments. And he said, I'm done. Put up a big piece of Bristol board on the door and called it put up wall. Ooh. So then when the kids came in from recess, he said, OK, I don't want to hear your put downs. Tell me what we're going to put up on this wall. And that became something the class used. And they put up compliments for each other on the wall. And it was a nice transition from that getting attention for the negative tattletaling to now switching to actually acknowledging positive things in their peers. Um, attention getters, Trisha, it's not my idea, Trisha Fugelstad, she's an art teacher, a blogger down in the States. She has a routine to get the students' attention because we, we need those and it was Mona and then the students say back Lisa and they have to sit like Mona Lisa. So I did that with my students for a little while and we talked about how Mona Lisa sits all quietly and we did that for about, I, I think that sort of worked in our class for about three weeks. And then they're like, yeah, we're not buying this anymore. So we had transitioned. So instead of Mona Lisa in my class, they liked rock stars. And they posed like a rock star. Um, I'm thinking after hearing about Harry Potter, Harry Potter posed with the wand. It's just a way to get their attention, to get them to freeze. And they love this kind because then they come up with a whole bunch of ones. We have Blue Jays at the start of the year. We've stopped doing that, unfortunately. <laughs> but they would pose with the bat. Um, and the last one is around the class reward challenge. Routines have, they're part of a loop called the habit loop. There's a cue that sets off a routine and there has to be a reward. The reward can be extrinsic or it can be <coughs> intrinsic. And sometimes we as teachers do need to maybe have those extrinsic rewards in our classroom. So I have something called 
the dino fish challenge, partly because my son grew out of the dino stage, so we had a whole bunch of plastic dinosaurs in my house, and I found a fish. So we have, they try and earn 40 dinosaurs, they earn the fish, and then they get a reward. And you can see, I don't tell them what the reward is. That's actually, they chose, that would be one of the jobs of the people in our class. And so they write up their rewards. Of course, with a little bit of negotiation from me, otherwise I'd have a party in my class for four or five days long if they got to choose. But so they create this list of rewards and then the prime ministers in my class as one of their roles, they decide on what that reward will be. And it's a really fun way to engage the class. And we decide as a class what our goals will be. And sometimes they'll come up with the goals themselves and they'll come in, let's say from recess, and they'll say, you know, down in the locker room, it's absolutely crazy, blah, blah, blah. And I say, okay, well, is that going to be a dino fish challenge for us? Well, yes, it is. Okay, well, how many dinos do you think it's worth that you boys can be up here in two minutes? And they're like, whoa, that's going to be worth five. Oh, yeah, that's, that's big. Okay, so five dinos. So they like to do that kind of thing for their dino fish rewards. All right, Jen. So <laughs> we're keeping our two minutes here. Oh, we're at 10 minutes. We're, we're good. We're good. We're good. Um, okay, we just want to, we really value your break. We do. Um, the next chapter of our book is on independent work and executive functioning. I feel like that's a lot of buzzwords that's going around a lot. We want our kids to be independent, but we want them to be self-regulated. We want them to be uh, organized. We want all of those things for them, but we've got to teach it and model it, and we've got to talk about it, right? So these are just three little routines that I use, um, and there's tons in the chapters, but um, these are three that we use just to help regulate it. So just as I was talking about before, about attendance, and how the kids come in the morning and they, one of my morning routines always is on the interactive whiteboard, I have a question. It's always a big idea from the day before, so I get to carry that conversation to the next day, refresh your learning, but it's an opinion question that they have to commit to. So um, this, we are doing a unit on energy is my grade fives. There's one type of energy source that is the best, and uh, the kids have to take their name, drag it to the spot, and that, that commits their, that, that they made a commitment we talk about that, we have a class discussion, and then it's, they can, they're free after their discussion to move their name because learning's never solid, right? We're always flexible and we're always readjusting. But what I wanna talk about in this one for executive functioning is that little timer right there. What I do is, um, when I first sit down and before the kids come in, I put the little timer on. You can get so many of them, I find. Uh, you can use classroom timers, the ones that flip. You can use all kinds of stuff out there. And the internet has tons of free things like that that you can use. This is just one of the ones on notebook. And I just set it. I set it for 30 minutes, because my kids have from 8 to 8.30 to walk in. So I set it for 30 minutes. And then at 8.30, the buzzer goes off in the room. And they know that they have to be in their seats and we're starting to talk. So it's, so they can see, so I've got my little ones who are doing whatever they need to do. Some of them are boring tasks, some of them are, they're doing their own thing. They're settling, they're putting their coats away, they're organizing themselves. And they are, they're able to figure out when class is starting. They're able to sort of self-regulate or self-manage that. And the other one is, I was talking here about, in terms of responsibility. So. Um, this one here is on the bottom is the homework missing. It's just, it's easy as it, it's, if they don't have their homework, they come in and there's no homework, um, they're not gonna tell me about it, because that's fine, I don't need to know about it. They're gonna go to the homework bin, they're gonna grab out the homework slip, they're gonna fill out what they didn't do, what their plan is for finishing it, they're gonna come to me and have it signed, they're gonna go home and have mommy and daddy sign it, and then it's just a nice little record for me, I've got it for parent-teacher interviews, and they completely managed that and took care of it, and I didn't have to hear Miss Harper, I forgot my homework, right? They were able to self-regulate self-manage that. Um, this one is for working memory. So um, every math lesson and inquiry lesson, those are the two that are sort of my dominant day. <laughs> math is about an hour and a bit and inquiry is about an hour and a half. It's my dominant day lessons. I put up the objective and then the process to get there. And one of the rules in my classroom and that I've just done for years, this is a grade one example, but I do in grade five too, is I just, I never give them a page number. It's just, I, I want the working memory, I want to incorporate the skills that they've been doing. So I would, instead of, instead of saying, um, turn to page seven, I would give them tallies because we just finished doing tallies. I've used coins, I use clocks, I've laminated big coins, and I magnetize them to the board and turn, turn to page loony plus <laughs> a quarter and a dime, you know? And that's the page you have to go to. Or um, in grade five, we're doing algorithms. So I might say, turn to page 100 divided by two plus five, and that's the page that they're working on. Um, but I just never give page numbers. And it's just, it's just to help the working memory out. Do I have one more minute? And the other thing that I want to talk about really quickly is the 10 to 2. 
And it's, it's mentioned a lot, and we talk about it quite a bit, but the whole idea that I know you're sitting here very quietly and very patiently listening to us talk for 20 minutes, um, but the whole rule of 10 minutes of talking re retention to two minutes of movement at, at some point to keep them engaged and to keep them active, and that helps their working memory, and it definitely helps, their, it helps them sort of process and flip around and just remembering that they need to move. That's something I want to throw in there. The 10, ten to, two. to 10 two. Ten to two. And there's a lot of research. Some research says age per minute, plus a few more. Other research says 10 to two. And we've, we've read different things in different books, but um, that's where we're at, for sure. Uh, next one. There you go. And really quickly talking with that, if this was in my classroom, I would already see you're being great. Everybody would be getting wiggly. So we have a routine. I teach in 4.0, so we have the 4.040, it's 10 exercises, they do it four times, and I just go 4.040, and they stand up, and they do their little 40 exercises, they're done, they sit down, and that's a way we get a little bit of a brain break. And I know my friends have adapted that to different things in their class, just to get them moving, but have a routine around creating that movement. So this one's around working collaboratively. We have a whole chapter about routines that you can encourage collaborative learning. The active listening cards, they are as simple as they look. Um, in the younger grades, one person holds the listening card, one person holds the speaking card, so they take turns speaking, and it gives them a visual prompt, and it, well, it gives them some verbal cues. Uh, as they get older, I've used talking sticks, so each student in a group will get four or five talking sticks. Once they run out of those sticks, that's every contribution they make, they put them in the middle of the circle for their conversation, and then they can't contribute anymore until other people in the group have used up their talking sticks. Then they take them back and they start again. And that's just to help everybody in the group get an opportunity to share. Um, the colored markers at the bottom, that's a routine for assessing when they're working in a group, that every student has their own color marker or color pencil, crayon or colored pen, and when they're working on something, they work in that color. So you as the teacher can see what the different individuals have done. And then the final one is a linear flowchart. That one I did for my smart board. And we talked, we had a group goal, which was writing survivor stories. It was a big group project. And they would move their symbol depending on where they were. So it was a nice way for me at the start of the class, I would put up that screenshot and I would know where the different groups were. And they had complete ownership over showing that process. And before I had a smart board, I just used to make a big sort of long arrow when we put the tasks in and they'd move it up using clothespins. But it's nice to have that kind of visual in the class and for the students to know how to use it. Right. Um, got three minutes. <laughs> three, oh, is that the code? Oh, jeez. Okay, three minutes. Um, okay, uh, these are three, I love assessment routines. These are my favorites. So, um, a really quick hand continuum. Um, how, like, if I was to ask my students, how they're feeling about a task that we're doing. I'd say, okay, in, um, ye yesterday we were doing lattice multiplication. And before I taught it, I want, to get in, I want to get a really quick ballpark as to who had exposure to it already. So I said, okay, lattice multiplication. Never heard of it, don't know who I am, don't know what I'm doing here, hand on table. Um, totally know it, I can teach it, and I'll show you right now what it is, Miss Harper, hand in the air. And that's just a continuum, and they, they, we do it so frequently that it's just a really quick way. I can see where their hand is, and I can just gauge my class really quickly, and I can see I've got some that will teach it, and I've got some that have never been exposed to it. Just really, I do it constantly, and it's a really quick formative assessment, and then post assessment. I can use it all the time, right? Um, tallying up the test is another assessment. This is summative. So if I give my kids a math test, and or, or some sort of a summative test, testing situation. Um, math, typically. Um, what I'll do is, as they're writing the math test, I pick one color of pen, and every time they ask me a question, I put a tally mark beside it. And so, then at the very end, I get the test back, and I just put a number in the order and handed it in. And so then I send, I, in grade one, I send this email to the parents, and I talk to the kids about it, but in grade five, I send it directly to the parents, and I say, um, your kids did well, it's really great. They all did really well on the test, but here's some secret spy information on the test that you might like to know. First of all, if the number, I number the tests as they came in. So if it's a number one or two or three, and they've got lots of mistakes, they're rushing. They're really rushing. If it's, if it's a number 30 and they're still struggling, we, we, we've got some things that we need to work on. If they're 30 and they've, and they've done really well, they're really checking their work. Um, 
and then and so I can so I can just use those numbers to help me gauge that. Uh, the tallies are great because I can I can sit there and I can mark the test and that kid's done really well and he nailed it. Um, but there's five tally marks beside it. So I had to go up to him five times to help him sort the question, answer the question. So I know from my own mindset frame that even though he was able to answer at that one point, that's something I still need to continue with him to work on further because he still hasn't solidified it yet. And I share that information with the parents so they, they know it as well. And I share it with the boys as well because we're, we're working together, right? This isn't my role. Like we're all working together to, to achieve this. So that's the tally of the test. Goals are my favorite. Um, uh, and I'm, right now, my grade five classroom, they've all got a goal on their desk. And we're just, we call it the 21 day challenge. Every child picks a goal. And in grade one, it was really great because they just wanted the sticker. So they'd say, so they, do I have like one minute? Is this what I have? No. Yeah. <laughs> um, so in grade one, they, um, they it starts at the beginning of the year. You come in and you've got one person that is not doing the homework. You've got one person that desks look like it, it, it could be an artifact in a museum. You've got, you've got a person in your classroom that um, is always stumbling in late. And God love them, they just need to come a little closer you know, to, to the bell, right? They're taking too long with their locker. And they've got all these individual goals. And then you've got ones that are fine, but you're like, it's not really fair for me to isolate just a few and work on things with them. Everybody has something they could work on. It's not, it, everybody has somewhere that they should be going. So as a class, we each write our own individual goals and they have to be teacher approved. And then in grade one, every time they did it, they just come up to me and say, um, I, I organized all my homework and I chunked it before I left. Fantastic. Actually, that's a grade five test. Grade one, they never chunked it. They chunked their homework. <laughs> um, but grade one, Miss Harper, I read fluently. Or Miss Harper, I checked my work before I handed it in. Great, go get a sticker, sweetheart. And they would go get it. So it's just a little bit of teacher approval so I can monitor it. And they're self, but they're self advocating for their own goals. They're aware of what they're doing. It's a conversation they can have at home. Mom, Dad, I'm working on goals. This is what it is. Great, what did you do? Did you achieve any stickers today? In grade one, every time they got two little stickers, they got a big one to wear home so that Mom and Dad could celebrate the fact. That they said that they've met their goal twice. In grade five, doesn't work. They don't want to wear a sticker home. Um, they, they were horrendously shocked when I suggested it. Um, so in grade five, they get ten little stickers because they still need to self-advocate. They still need to be aware of it. And then we created a list, just like Catherine did, of extrinsic rewards because I want to move it to intrinsic. So we talked about twenty win days of working on our goals being extrinsic, and then we get to move it intrinsic. So yeah, I totally bribed them. After ten little stickers, they each picked four things that they would like, and one was a chocolate bar, thank you Halloween for giving me small portions. Um, one was a smelly sticker, one was free computer time during recess as long as it was approved classroom games. And um, there was no fourth. And so and this, they come and they get their little 10 stickers and they would get their extrinsic reward and that's worked. That's worked. If you looked at my kids' goals right now, they're all full of stickers and they're really proud, but we're switching them over. I've got a big chart now, and we're moving all those goals into the word where it says intrinsic, because now they own it. Now it's theirs. Their desk is clean. They're sorted. They're organized. They've been working on this for weeks. Now we're picking a new goal, and it's just something I love to do because it keeps them going. I'm so sorry. That was longer than usual. Oh, there we go. We're over. Oh, we're, we're Why don't we do a hand continuum? Okay. We do your hand continuum. Okay, would you like us to just finish? We've got two more slides, or would you like to We've go? We've got one. We, we have to finish. We okay. have to finish. Okay, so if you are at all interested in anything you see up here, gratitude spies, a way for the day buddy, responsible problem solving, I would be so happy to talk to you about any of those because they're all really great routines. But going for coffee and having a break is also a very important routine too, so we don't want to take that away from you. And oh. then this is the last one. So if you want to talk about different ways to help clean up the classroom to make it curriculum related and fun, or how to organize the agenda so that it's more than just writing things down, but helping them with the executive functioning and the, the memory and the I'm organization, we're happy to do that. We cut each other off. We're good. <laughs> All right. And this is how to get a hold of us if you can't get a chance to talk to us today. Yeah. And we're both. Oh, yeah.